the Seed Story Cup 4. We are going to get into the second match of the semifinals with me, Nimsh, for casting and uh, Mysterious Girl. Right. So, um, for now, all we know about the finals is that Stan Sivka is going there for sure. Yeah, which is uh, kind of expected. Like, uh, when we looked at the list of the, all, the, all the pros, Stan Sivka is one of the most consistent guys who's getting in the finals. And uh, right now, being there, it's, it's not that surprising. Yeah, I mean, he's been doing uh, very well. It's, it's kind of funny because we hadn't heard from him in tournament, uh, on the tournament scene for a while. It's a big name that's always been consistent in the pro, uh, the pro circles, right? We know the name. But as far as the Twitch audience is concerned, he seems like he's been flying under the radar of many people, but now he's been taking his spot. Like, you know, he finished uh, Star Ladder, and uh, now in this event, he's also in the finals. Yeah, even in a, a Romanian event that they cast at Cluj Napoca, he got really deep in the tournament. It yeah. was uh, a, a single elimination at some point, so uh, he did really well. And uh, his opponent will be Gara, best shaman. And I think Shaman is actually being banned for Gara. Yeah, uh, Shaman, the thing about Shaman, it, it, that's really interesting, is nobody really expected it to show up. And uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that we've seen a lot of Warrior, a lot of Paladin, and a lot of Freeze Mage. So one of the things that Shaman does well is it negates Druids, uh, and you know, Warrior as well. It negates Paladins pretty well by uh, using the, the Hexes to negate Mysterious Challenger. When it's big mid-range, you have the answers for Tyrion. And with a double Doomhammer, you have Warrior in your pocket. I said Gara is going to be opponent for Sansa Sivka, but there's actually one more player here in the... Super in JJ, yeah, in this match. And uh, Gara hasn't won it yet, so what, who do you think has an edge, JJ or Gara? Uh, Lineup-wise, I want to say that uh, Gara is very well equipped, technically, to, do, you know, to win the game. The thing is that right now they're down to only one class difference, which is Paladin and Mage. So it's really going to come down to whether or not Paladin beats Mage. Overall, I'd say that Freeze Mage uh, would tend to beat Paladin, but it can be matched up against a really bad, uh, you know, Warrior, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. Mostly Freeze Mage has a good matchup versus Paladin, but uh, if Paladin gets a good curve and Mage doesn't get a great, great hand, then Paladin has a way to overpower Freeze Mage as well. So we see this interesting matchup, Druid versus Hunter, where normally Hunter was winning it before, but now with the Darnassus' Aspirin, which we see on board, it's a bit better for, for Druid. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good start, but uh, Super JJ was able to defuse that bomb. And uh, there's no 3-drop at the moment, right? Yeah, Paladin has a bad hand. Um, Paladin, I mean, Druid. Druid has a bad hand. And Hunter <laughs> yeah, has... Sure. We talked about Paladin so much. Yeah, but it wrecked full rust, rubbing, rubbing my back, so I couldn't correct you. Oh, I'm being distracted because, like, you are kind of talking with our mysterious guest in here. Yeah, well, we're, you know, communicating telepathically. To talk. No, why why are you not allowed to talk? Yeah, because I'm just a mysterious girl and never have a name, so I'm not yeah. talking. She, she doesn't know her name. Do you want? Yeah, do you want to have a name? Like maybe you can introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, but I'm uh, using my cosplay name, so I'm Pancake Cosplay for now. All right, she is yeah. Pancake Cosplay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the casting. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Welcome to the casting. Uh, it's going to be an interesting match. Yeah, I so know. If you have something to say during the match, absolutely uh, say it. If you're afraid of the spiders, this is a good moment to say that. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of Elise in League of Legends, so I'm not afraid of spiders. Sorry. Okay. Oh my god. Sorry that I say League of Legends. I mean, I'm for Gaira because he is the last German stands on this. He's the last magic. German, and he's yeah. also the last shaman that I've ever seen. <laughs> in the, of recent memory. JJ is the German as well. Yeah, but like, JJ is not like as German as Gaira. Yeah. Actually, 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 Gara is, is Serbian. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. It's hilarious. And That's I think he was born in Bosnia. Of course, yeah, he was born in Bosnia. He's actually Serbian, and uh, but he's a German. So you need to understand that, Nimsh. You can't just make accusations of him not being German. You he's can't... a boss from Bosnia who was living in suburban <laughs> Serbia, and now he's in Germany. Yeah. So what? You have a problem with that, Nimsh? I have no problem with that. That's what I thought. I hope he doesn't have a problem that his shaman is banned. All right, so I didn't follow the game, but it looks like the druid's about to die. Yeah, well, druid was missing <laughs> a lot of drops. <laughs> I, I, I literally missed a lot of the match, and I'm a little sorry. I noticed what happened. He never hit the curve, and the hunter's just been pressuring him with uh, you know small to average minions. And since he set up the glaive zuka, he was able to get a good trade. Yeah, I can I can summarize it for you. So they played cards, right? And um, <laughs> The Hunter cards were better, and they dealt damage, and the Druid cards didn't, so right now we are in this situation. So, what you're saying is Super JJ is the world champion? Uh, well, not yet, but he is getting there to be maybe, um, you know, Seed Story Cup champion. Yeah, one of the interesting things here is that there's almost no way for Gar to get out of this unless he picks up, say, a swipe off an Azure Drake top deck, 
And even if he does, he's still going to be too off lethal, which is very easy for the, the hunter to find. And he used one swipe before, but Noxious. The more important question is, what have you been up to at Siege Strike Up, and how are you enjoying it? Oh man, I've been playing a ton of Overwatch uh, with you. Yes. Um, and I've been, uh, I've been loving the teammates we have. Uh, we're talking about... You know, Hanzos that miss their shots, Tracers that run into traps, that fall in you know, in the middle of nowhere, uh, Winstons that leap off of buildings into the emptiness. And all of our, our teammates, they have this trait that they can't see Junkrats. Junkrat is literally invisible. He has stealth as far as every team we play with is concerned. So we literally have a lot of fun, we play Overwatch, we play Hearthstone, we watch Hearthstone and hang out. Yeah. All right. And so Gar, Gar is dead. Almost. Uh, not quite. Concede. Yep. Yeah. Well, the, one of the things to say, though, is that uh, Hunter is known, like mid-range Hunter is known for its ability to counter Druid. One of the things that Druid has uh, that it didn't have before to beat Hunters is the Aspirant. Um, yeah. Fortunately, like a solo Aspirant is not going to win you the game. It's going to help you a lot if they don't kill it. Because you get the initiative, you get the extra bump in curve. Even if they kill it, if you have a follow-up, it's still helpful. Right. Like a, it's a minion. They have to waste some damage or some minions on it. But Gara didn't have any follow-up. He had, like, what, shapeshift on... Yeah, he had to shapeshift to kill the abusive sergeant, which uh, led absolutely nowhere. So we're going to see the mirror match, Hunter versus Hunter. Now, typically, and this is not always true, but typically the more aggressive one tends to take it. Hybrid Hunter in this event has been very popular. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hybrid Hunter is really good, and the Face Hunter is favored, but Gara is arguably the best Hunter Hunter player. Like, he's the most knowledgeable about Hunter mirrors. I think RDU would like to take that um, as a title. I mean, he's, he, he, that's his favorite matchup. RDU says his favorite matchup of all time is Hunter versus is, Hunter. Is Mirror Match Hunter, because he thinks that's one of the matchups that takes the most skill to navigate, just because of the unknown factor of traps for the most part. Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, you have to navigate it for the early turns. Like, the Mulligan is super important in the first three turns, because if you mess that up, you're just dead. Yeah, it's, uh, that's kind of the way it works. Yeah. It's, it's kind of tricky. That's why people, some people say aggro is easy to play, and I, I argue that it's really not, because every mistake you make early can cost oh, the game. Oh, wow, a flare in Gara's Hunter deck. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't, I don't think this is the place to flare yet. I mean, the problem is you're not developing something else, which is exactly why Gara will simply opt to develop the board and get a flare when he can get a massive tempo swing from playing his own secrets. This is actually a really... Uh, Really good situation for Gara. Yeah, he also has Animal Companion and Glaive Zook on turn 4, so not a bad hand at all. So what do you expect him to, to have in his deck right now, trap-wise? Uh, from Gara? Yeah. I haven't seen his previous matches, but if I see this kind of Hunter, I would say Freezing Trap. Because so it, Freezing it or flashed, Snake. Right? Because it flashed on screen. Right. No, I think Freezing Trap and Snake are still like the two most common ones. Yeah, Frodan was playing Freezing Trap and Snake Trap, and I think this is correct. If you play Face Hunter, you'll play Explosive Traps. But if you go the um, hybrid version, pro probably Freezing is the best. Yeah. There was a while, too, where you had um, you know, very aggressive Hunters that still ran Freezing Trap as well. Yeah. That was one of the things that they did. So, interesting situation where Gara is kind of baiting out the second secret. And uh, it's good. Right now, he'll be able to attack with the, with the Glaive Zuka. Hope this is a Freezing Trap. Hope that there is no. Oh no my trap. God! If there's another, if there's another trap, this flare will be absolutely insane. Oh, he's just flaring to deal with one. So there was no second trap there. No, there was only the one. So it's gonna be a double freezing double trap. Double freezing trap deck, yeah. In that deck, so Gara knows that now. He's got perfect information as far as the traps are concerned. And he got his snake trap, as we mentioned, right? Yeah. And I mean, the scientist right now is unmanageable for Super JJ. He's almost just got to throw an arcane golem into it. <laughs> Oh my god! But the, if you play Arcane Golem, if you expect the high main, that's pretty bad, right? It's terrible. So maybe you just go with the... the juggler and play the... Uh, that scientist? The scientist? Yeah, yeah. Makes uh, sense because you've seen the flare. Right, I mean, it feels bad, but I guess ultimately it's not like you have a choice. Feels birthday, man. Birthday? Yeah, what? which is pretty bad. It's one of the emotes. Oh, wow. Okay, I must have missed something. Well, I, see, I'm not dank enough. Yeah. This. I'm not yeah. My dankness level is pretty high. But I've been not, casting with Forsen too much, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. That must be like a glorious cast. Forsen's actually surprisingly good at casting. He's yeah, got he's like great a lot at casting. Of, yeah, he's actually really good. Um, for all the, the trolling that he does and the dankness. But we went all the way with dank memes. 
Okay. Like, oh, this top deck is top kek. There, there's no, there's no coming back. All right, so you've got the opportunity to go for Animal Companion Kill Command to face, um, but that means that if there's a freezing trap, you're gonna be. In, oh my! You are. Okay, never mind. You just go <laughs> face. You don't even think about it. Yeah, it's just yellow. This. Yeah, you kind of win next turn on the back of your uh, weapon and Kill Command on its own. You don't like. You don't even need anything. No matter what happens, you've got a lethal with just one spell. Yeah, that's super easy. So only Lothab can help, but it doesn't really help. A kill Command. So there is no kill. There is the Snake Trap. No way Super JJ has to concede this one. And you see? Gara, so good at Hunter Mirrors. Oh my god. He absolutely got this game. Yeah, it's a very volatile matchup though, because it tends to go one way or the other like very early in the game. So it's got it's pretty much there's no comeback once you're too low on life, right? Yeah, mostly. And uh, it's a really delicate matchup because sometimes you have to decide if you want to go for face or do you want to trade, and as you mentioned the secrets. So we've seen really good huffer from Gara as well. Like it, he knows how to huffer. He's just a good hunter, man. Yeah, he is, right? He, he did pick up the Aspirant. Or in, in the Ruin. Like, he's good at what he plays. Yeah, yeah. So we will see how good he is with the Hunter, because he oh has to stay God. with it. Yeah, that's going to be really rough, though, because Warrior is very well... Like, right now, what they've got, their decks are very uh, defensive. Everybody's pretty much playing uh, Control Warrior these days. Uh, in this tournament, it's been, like, the most popular deck. We saw Patron come up. Whenever yeah. it showed up, it, it got faced off against another warrior, which was Control, which beats it to the ground. So it was warrior a little Warriors was, was often banned as well. So yeah. we've seen some warriors, but uh, I think Warrior was one of the most popular bans. Oh, yeah. The, the score is actually 1-1. One to one. It's not 0-0, zero, zero, as you might be misled into thinking. Yeah, Ch Chad is always right, though. I mean, oh. they find lethal way early in the game. Sometimes, like, it's turn two, and I don't realize it, but Chad tells me I've got lethal, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're totally right. I look at my mana and my, my, my attack and stuff, and I'm like, yeah. Chad is really yeah. good at spotting lethals. Chad is the best. And casters are the worst. Uh, all the time. <laughs> casters never see lethal. I miss count all the time. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Thank the you so much for Twitch chat is, um, yeah. Twitch chat is amazing. Twitch chat is saying it's default right now. Can you see it, Nox? I see it. Uh, it's Bow into turn 4, Hero Power Creeper, into turn 5, Lothab, into turn 6, High Main, into turn 7, Dr. Boom, and you just smork it all the way through. Maybe you get like free snakes and try to get Exodia with them. Snake Zodia. <laughs> Snake Zodia, oh no. Oh, dude, yeah. that was so dank. <laughs> oh my god. It's all right, Nimsh. It's fine. I'll, I'll, we'll make it through the day, one thing at a time. We have two more matches on the this match and then the final. Yeah, I think Frodan is going to be coming to the cast and bench. I'm hoping so at least. That'll be fun. Um, he had, like he, he's been playing so much that he hasn't had much time to cast. Yeah, he's not casting okay. right now because he's talking to Archon. You know, like they want to pick him up after the top eight performance. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I know they had the contract for Oskaka already drafted when he won the BlizzCon, right? They were like, "Hey, Oskaka, you're looking for a new home, maybe." I remember that. Yeah. That, that was pretty funny. Well, I was I was wondering why they didn't sign Purple after he won the NA champs. Yeah, I was actually surprised because you know Purple would be a great pickup for Archon, and we know that he's never been with them, so would have been like a great a great spot for them. All right, so back to the game now. The the Shredder is actually a bit tricky because you don't have weapons yet, and even though you get a Shredder on the following turn, yeah, exactly. I was gonna say he might have to use up a Shield Slam um, on this minion, and that's. Always a little bit tricky because that's not really what you want to do using it on a you know four three early in the game. But he, because he's got Belcher, he can curve nicely. But the Lothab comes in and negates that completely. Yeah, Lothab is really good on five. Uh, does Gara play the the Lions as well? I think so. Like Lothab is suggesting that this is the the hybrid. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you might just go for Dead's Bite here though. Uh, the thing is, if you play Belcher, it dies automatically um, to everything they they play. But you can also weave in a hero power on your next turn with the axe, which you can't do with Belcher. The only thing as well with Belcher is that if it gets owled, um, then you're in a really bad spot. Well, are you in that bad of a spot? Not a terrible a one. 31 health. Right. Um, but you do have to curve into turn 7, and get in is not something that's necessarily going to win the game on its own. So It's a really tough spot, because I feel like you really want to get that extra hero power next turn. I like Belcher because you have the armor smith. So why this chat? No game sound there. On the chat? Yeah. No, it's like Mike muted. It's probably a lie. Mike muted is a lie for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are getting the snake trap, which is uh, which makes sense here. Uh, it's no time for Geddon. 
A lot of dragons for support JJ, which is not good now. Alex Raza might be good later, but it's not the point. Like right now, he wants something like uh, maybe second belt. He just needs to sweep the board at some point. Like the execute pickup is actually very good here because it allows him to clear pretty much, um, you know, the two biggest threats on the board. Yeah. And he's able to curve into get in, which will remove the small stuff that might come up. He, the only thing he really doesn't want to see here is a Doctor Boom follow up from Gara because that would literally lock him out of options, or at least it would feel that way. He's playing ground snake trap. I Very like well that. played. Very well played. Um, okay. The execute. Well, the thing with the execute is like, look, you can you can take five damage here, and you have Gaddon next turn, so you deal with the loss up eventually. Right, right. I mean, it doesn't matter because you can even trigger the snake trap at that point. Like, you don't mind popping the snake trap yeah. and then going for the uh, the Gaddon. The only thing you're losing out on, like, you're giving the hunter an extra charge on the bow, but that shouldn't be an issue really. I, I think like you might want to keep it for high main. You might be expecting high main next turn. <laughs> I think they put the game sound. <laughs> oh. No sound in game feels bad, man. Right, so yeah, a actually, lot of the armor is gone here. This is a pretty threatening board, honestly. And this creeper is not going to die to the death bite. So do you pop the shredder? Do you pop the creeper? What's uh, more threatening? The one ones or a two drop? All right, the game sound is broke. Yeah, so the gu guys, um, <laughs> should we should we actually Best like imitate the, yeah, totally yeah. imitate the game sounds? Yeah, I can totally imitate the game sounds. Yeah, let's imitate the game sounds. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna pull that off, Nimsh. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely not it. Uh, Fire. It. Oh yeah, yeah, that's um. That was totally it, Nimsh. So he, he opted not to attack with the weapon because of the possible high minus mission. I'll say one thing here: if you owl the Geddon and just push face, I think you might be able to get the lethal long before the warrior can kill you. Yeah, that's uh, really reasonable, especially because there is a uh, snake trap still. Yeah, I mean, the warrior is probably just going to attack into something in Alex in this case, which is very good for him. Um, the weapon will clean up the board. He can attack with, in, with the get on into the 3-2. And then kill the 4-2 with a weapon. Not, not even, like, maybe just you say, oh, you do, do you have to Alex? That's the big question. Yeah, you, ha you Alex yourself, right? But, like, maybe you want to execute an armor up this turn. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I just feel like because of Alex, you can basically go as low as one health without worrying too much. We'll like see, with, with Alex, you gain five health plus. No, no, no. You actually you, attack with the weapon right. into the 4 2, then you actually get even more health. Yeah. That's right. Maybe, well, de developing the 8 8 on its own, I think, might be worth a lot. Just the fact that you're developing that big minion is enough probably to justify making that play. Yeah, I think I like it. I like Alex more than just like trying to armor up. But. Uh, He's keeping the double leper known because he thinks if there's an Alex, I'm gonna need a little bit more than what I've got. With with Bash, yeah, with Bash, you probably Alex here. That's so much damage, and then next turn you'll be able to gain five more health. Yeah, it's funny because the arcane golem is literally what enables Super JJ to do this. If the arcane golem was held just a little bit longer, perhaps you might have been able to uh, push a little bit more and make that extra mana crystal irrelevant. I mean, I don't think he might have you know threatened the warrior enough. He's still thinking about it because he can just attack with the weapon and then he can execute the 4-2 and bash face to deal more damage. But I think Alex Straza is worth it uh, because he will have like 15 points of damage, 18 with the bash. So right. he three more, like he needs a fire war to just win next turn. Yeah, and he's going to be on 15 health as well. So like 18 with the bash. So it's going to be really hard to push him off of this with two cards left in hand. Even if he gets a high main, it's not enough. And hard, for Hunter, it's not that easy to do one damage to kill the Geddon. So it seems like Super JJ is going for it. Just killing Dark King Golem, uh, going with Alex Straza to heal himself back to 15. Yeah, I think he might have been considering, you know, Alexing the opponent um, and trying to push. But when you look at the, the amount of damage that's coming your way... Yeah, uh, six is too low yeah. with, with three cards and a hero power. That's... Freezing Shop is a nice pickup. Actually, that might be too much of a, too much damage, maybe, even. Because he then replays Geddon and deals two damage to you, so you take you know fifteen plus an extra two. I don't. But I'm not sure it would really, matter much. I don't think you can really replay Geddon here because no, you're gonna take. Uh, you probably attack for sure, and then you can go Doctor Boom and Bash. You can play it very safely and simply Bash armor up, but you want to set up lethal next. Oh, you actually will have lethal with Geddon next turn, I think. So yeah. if you if you bash face, oh, but he's gonna up. be down like six more health. He's gonna be on seven. 
He's bashing face. Yeah, bash face armor. Um, do you armor up or boom? That's the question as well. Okay, there's. All right, never mind. Guy. He knows what's up. <laughs> I mean, there's been a lot of early concedes. I feel uh, players know when it's lost. Gar Gar's really good um, at figuring out when the the game's lost and just leaving. I know Wreckful does the same thing a lot. Maybe it's the temples. Re Wreckful like left uh, the series mid mid series. Yeah, that was, I know. It's just. Uh, so is he really that good? That's <laughs> like. He, he's good at leaving. Yeah, he's good leaving. But then he came back and actually won, so that yeah, was even better. Uh, there was a game that he played, uh, rec like, I think it was one of the, the matches where he was playing Hunter, and there was a chance he top decked Juggler, and he left before he could maybe top deck his opponent to death. Um, I thought that was a little unfortunate, but he's very quick at calling the shots. Yeah. Okay, uh, so um, JJ won that one versus Hunter, so Hunter is eliminated for both players. JJ will have to stay with the Warrior. Right. What's up? Nothing, just... Uh, Chad is pretty angsty. It's like they're not used to seeing somebody who doesn't talk on the cast. Yeah, just like yeah. No, it's cool. Just it seems like they've never seen a girl before. They, and they haven't. No. Aren't not here for Hearthstone or anything. They're just here to see maybe some grills here. Yeah, they're here for the grills. Yeah, um, I'm I'm here for the grills too. Like Where they watch the right, grills. Right, exactly. Well, Where's Eloise? We can ask you some cosplay related questions, for example. Yeah, but not when the game is over. Because we don't have game sound, maybe we can do Yeah, something. I can ask you like a cosplay related question. A really simple question. What, like, if, what do you think is better, Warbler or Foam? In Germany, it's Warbler because you get it easier. You get can't get AFF Foam straight here. That's sad. All right, that's a good answer. So I, I don't want to sound like an uneducated <laughs> idiot. What, you don't know what the Warbler is? I have absolutely <laughs> no clue Should what I you're talking you about. Should I tell you what Warbler is? Warbler is a summer plastic. You can uh, she, uh, firm it with uh, heat. You need a heat gun and then you can oh. make some really uh, nice badass armor cosplay. That explains the armor at BlizzCon. Yeah. yeah, that's got to be it. Yeah, that's a good. Oh, material. there we go. And but in the in the United States, uh, they use more foam because it's hotter there, and foam is not that. A warbler is actually banned yeah. in some states. Because, Why? Because you Why can make. Think? Yeah, you can you can make weapons with warbler, which are actually kind of dangerous. So what you're saying is, I can wear a gun in the U.S., but I can't have plastic. Yeah, you can have. It. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. That's sad. Oh, All right. That's amusing. Uh, anyway, back to the game. Secret Paladin Zub from Gara over Super JJ, who, by the way, um, has been able to get an edge over Gara. He's currently up 2-1. Uh, the first one to get the four wins, of course, is going to be moving through. Secret Paladin from Gara can take games from about anyone. Control Warrior also has a really tough time against it if they get the good Divine Shields. Yeah, but then on the other hand, if Gara gets a lot of secrets, that's something that you don't want. And that's one of the uh, bad sides of the Paladin. If you curve out, it's amazing it's really hard to stop even unstoppable but if you get those secrets early it's really troublesome yeah i mean the, the secrets here are kind of um like he got a single secret that really d won't mean too much um the thing i'm wondering about is repentance like what's the timing on it when do you use it uh, in this matchup do you try to stop a belcher with it next turn when you go for muster for battle or do you wait a little longer you might wait till the death spite's gone yeah death spite or maybe something like um when Death Smite is on one charge, actually. Oh my god, Kings is so good here. Yeah, Kings is great. So, like, you want to snipe a minion with Repentance, right? You maybe want to get the Shield Maiden or, or a Six Drop overall because that can be, like, Sylvanas, maybe Torison. Yeah. Which even plays Torison at the moment. I mean, sniping Sylvanas can be a drawback because sometimes you like to smash your entire board into Sylvanas just before you, you know, you, you let her steal something worthless. Yeah. Um, so, it could be a little tricky depending on how uh, Gar ends up approaching this with Repentance. I'm wondering what Super Jage is going to do, though, from uh, on this turn, because the Creeper is really annoying. The, the, the first question is, do you want to use a weapon at all? Uh, you probably can use a weapon, so it doesn't matter. Would you override... This is going to sound really weird, but would you override Deathbite and execute the Creeper? Um, or would you simply... Well, you can also just... Just pop it with the Bash and then, you don't like, armor up? You don't have to override it. You could just kind of, uh, like, attack it. Wait, place. what was that? That was a slight... That has to be a slight misplay. Right? Oh, no, it wasn't. Never mind. No, it's perfect. No, he needs the AoE. Sorry, I was thinking he attacked first, but yeah, he has to because he uh, he has to get himself the, uh, the AoE on the one ones. And our secret this turn is so awkward. Uh, he's going to go with the four. Well, I he has guess to. Death Spite is, is out. He can he, go with the tokens. Yeah, he absolutely has to. He won't expect another AoE from Warrior besides Brawl, perhaps. Oh, look at this. He is sniping turn six. Yeah, but What's Sylvanas perfect? is going to be kind of annoying. Well, you can kill it easily. Give him and the then, one one. Yeah, that's fine, right? Like you don't care about your health that much. Yeah, I feel like Justicar might see play from the Super JJ before Sylvanas, 
the only thing that Sylvanas does here that uh, Challenger, I mean, that she does is maybe threaten a Challenger, assuming he wants to be curving out on it. But the thing is, with the one ones on the board and a weapon, there's a good chance that competitive spirit triggers and then everything can trade before he goes for the Challenger. I like Justicar because right. you might be thinking about Repentance and then from turn 7 you'll be able to use the hero power to gain for armor and you have Shield Stam as well. So you have the small cards kind of like Death Spite for their set turn 7 and the Shield Stam and armor up. So just throwing down uh, Justicar here will provide you with a bit, a bit of a better end game, I feel. Uh, we're going to see another, I, I think he's, I mean, he's definitely considering getting the death bite out for the other AoE, but competitive spirit will ruin him. Yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of buffs here. Unless he attacks one of the minions? Oh, he's going for it. All right, so that's actually pretty clever. That's actually a really good play from Super JJ. Very, very heads up. Yeah, this, um, that was a risk kind of because it was possible that it's an avenge, right? But... Yeah. Yeah, very good read from his side. Yeah, with the Execute in hand, he knows that he just wants to set up an AoE for the turn 6 Challenger, which is exactly what he's pulling off. I just want to call this card Froden. Why? Because Froden was kind of like a mysterious <laughs> Challenger in this tournament. No. He appeared from nowhere, then he started wrecking people, you know, get to, got to top 8, and then he ran out of secrets, and he died to JJ. But is that how it works? I think, yeah. At some point, you do run out of secrets. I feel like people are having a lot of fun playing poker. Yeah, they have. They do? Yeah. So, somebody will win. Ugarit doesn't look as amused as the guys playing poker. Oh man, Sylvanas falling down, eating the Repentance on a board where you're actually liable to get something massive. This is exactly what Super JJ wanted to get and what Gara wanted to avoid. Unfortunately, look at the health count um, from Super JJ. If this doesn't steal something big, he might just get blown out. Actually, if Avenge lands on the 6... 6-5. Yeah, he has a good chance of getting one out of four, uh, out of two targets. Uh, the only thing that could backfire is if he gets exactly the 2-1 that he attacked into. All right, so this is a big moment. And oh! He go oh! <laughs> he got the pleb minion, no. <laughs> the pleb minion. <laughs> yeah, uh, the so there's a total of... 8-12 eight damage. Eight, then, ah, uh, one mana off. One mana off lethal, but that actually might be exactly what Super CJ needs to stabilize. Because um, if we look at his hand, he's got the ability to shield slam for all that's worth. I'm not sure that's going to do much. The Kings probably won't go on the 5-3, uh, the just because of the fact that BGH uh, can be a thing. Yeah, buffing the 6-5 six, uh, six, well, six, now is, is all right. Yeah. All right, so he's going to be uh, a little bit damaged off lethal, but the armor up... I mean, I'm not sure what you're looking for here if you're a Super JJ. There's very little I can even think of that can save you. Belcher number two would do a lot of work. Uh, will it save you, though? There is Consecration coming. Uh, you get to or, armor up. Or just Tyrion. Which is also great. Double big game hunter is not helping for sure. Yeah, Super JJ is hitting the uh, the double big game hunter problem that Tensivka did run in, into in the past. Would you say noxious that Super JJ's hand is a bit dwarfed after having those two big game hunters there? Is it dwarfed by what the, by, the, the by little big game hunters? By the BGHs? Yeah. I don't know, man. They're not that big. Oh, they are dwarves. Yeah. You're not falling for that one, right? No, but I'm uh, falling for this beautiful Shield Maiden. Yeah, it's pretty good. Putting JJ back to 8. I think he's still dead, though. Uh, because of the Consecration. So there is 6-8 uh, damage, and Gar is taking this very important matchup, tying up the series. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Yeah. A moment, for, a moment of silence for JJ. <laughs> 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 oh, no, poor guy. I don't even know what to say. So Gar is pumping out the Red Bull. I don't know if that's product placement or what, but... I don't mind it. No, there's no product placement of Red Bull here. No, we no. don't. We don't do that. We're not holding our monitor with Red Bulls. No, we never. And it we never do that. fell. It never fell over <laughs> because the Red Bull was not holding well. Yeah, Red Bull is pretty cool. Yeah, Red Bull holds monitors. Yeah. As it turns out, All it right. doesn't just give you wings. So, Gara's Mage. Gara, Gara is back to Paladin, obviously. Yeah, I, I think Secret Paladin against Freeze Mage is usually not a matchup you're happy to get into, but uh, we've seen people just win with it with complete blowouts because of crazy early game. Freeze Mage is really good versus Paladin, I think. But the Secret Keeper, that's such a funny card. You buff it with your secrets. Yeah. You play Ice Barrier and then it's actually getting buffed. Yeah, like the, the Mage is actually unable to play their secrets from hand, or they, uh, they can, but they don't want to. Um, just because of the fact that they're going to buff your Secret Keeper. And we've seen Secret Keepers go up to Undertaker levels of size, like 5, 6, 6, 7, 
which has been uh, it's been kind of a funny experience because it feels like the secret keeper is balanced by the fact that its enabling uh, criteria is very niche. But in truth, when you're facing off against a mage, it's one of the most important things. Well, when you are facing a six-seven secret keeper, you don't think it's balanced, <laughs> <laughs> right? Just a uh, six-seven one drop sounds balanced. All right, so like looking at Super Jage's hand, he. It's okay for now. Like he has the, the Con of Cold and Dumser and some draw. It's not great though. And uh, on Gar's side, it looks really good. He has the five drop. He has the six drop, and he had a really good opening as well. He needs some more curve, I guess. Like he will have the juggler on turn four, maybe. So something like Master for Battle would be amazing for for Gara. But now back to JJ. Yeah, Noble Sacrifice here is not going to do much besides kill the Mad Scientist, but that's enough as far as Gar is concerned. One damage to face is good, though. Yeah, and it also doesn't uh, give the Secret Keeper any bigger of a buff that it's already got, so... Oh, man! What a board. What so, a board. Can you even think about Doomsayer here? I think you've got to think about it, because the only thing that backfires is if something like Muster for Battle comes out, Cog or Hammer Cog Hammer. Well. Yeah, exactly. There's actually a lot of cards. There's, a, there's about three, and the, the knives all have to hit. And like, those are the cards one, you, one of them has to hit properly. Yeah, but those are the cards you mulligan for. <laughs> right. As a paladin. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you could just ping the juggler and finish it off on the next turn, and play the loot hoarder. Yeah. That would also be a very good play, because you're guaranteed to kill the, the juggler because there's no kings coming up. Cog Hammer again being the only thing that would maybe punish you. And that's, that's better than just playing the Loot Hoarder here because it would just die to the master or whatever. Like right. even a minion being played. Oh my god, that's insane. That's a really good curve. Yes, I mean, when the juggler dies, something's gonna get buffed. Yeah, and deal even more damage. So for now, the turn 4 doesn't look that great. And Con of Cold here doesn't achieve almost anything. I mean, it does freeze the, all the minions, but if you don't have a turn 5 play, okay. Now there's maybe a consideration. Double Doomsayer. Yeah, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say, but the only, I mean, would, yeah, True Server Champion would punish you. If this is competitive spirit, then True Server Champion would literally wreck you. You have to do like uh, Blessing of Kings well. even. So that's like so much damage potential there. Yeah. You could cone a coal and do it on turn five. But it's going to be, or wait for the Nova. You probably want to do it as soon as possible, but is this the point where you are so desperate? He's, he's going for the loot hoarder ping play that he uh, wants to go before. It's dangerous because it can be Avenge. We know it is Avenge. It could have been Redemption, which would give him like one knife to the face. Give him one back, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, the curve. Yeah. If, if this hits, if this hits the... Oh my this is, goodness. This, this is what I've been talking about. Like This deck sometimes is just unbeatable if it has this kind of curve. Like He really needs Frost Nova right now. The big problem right now, as well, is that he doesn't know it, but there's a Lothab in Gara's, like in Gara's hand. So if he's hoping to get the Cone of Cold Doomsayer on turn 6, it's not happening. Yeah, it's impossible. Lothab is just going to win this game. All right, so it turns out the... Uh, How much damage is it, Noxious? I mean, right now, he has to kill the Doomsayer, though, right? Well, if he has... The, he doesn't have lethal. Like, this is 17. This is 2 damage off. Yeah, could you... Do you ever just Blessing of Kings... No, well, it's because go full face because I, I don't think you're gonna get the lethal that way. I don't think so. I think Lothab is great, but if you have lethal, you will absolutely go for it. Yeah. But now you just slam Lothab and you kill. You hope maybe the. Well, actually, you can attack into the one free first to just deny the card draw. But do you even do it? Maybe you just go. I mean, if you attack into it, you give him one card, and what could he draw that's gonna stop you? A spell with Lothab? That's not even a problem. Yeah. So, all right, he's just gonna buff everything out of range of AOE that could punish him. Uh, but he's not going to be immune to something like a Nova Doomsayer. He assumes that if it were there, it would have been played on 5. Or but now he's going to get yeah. surprised because this Doomsayer Cone of Cold is going to backfire for Garo. Yeah, this is actually huge. Um, with the knives, there's no possibility to kill the Doomsayer. Yeah, I think Gara here was expecting the Nova on 5. And because it didn't show up, he went all in. Didn't realize that Kono Cold uh, could be a card in Super Jage's lineup. And he didn't want to go for uh, Lothab as well because he wanted to play Lothab right now to block Flame Strike. But then on the other hand, he had so much damage on board. With that Lothab, he would just block it. Yeah, he's going to try to still get as much damage to the face with the knives as he can, but they're all missing. Oops, oh my like, god! Oops, they're eating all the damage. MLG! Wow. All right, he did let one through, but... He's got a good record, so we have to find maybe something that has stealth. That would be good for, uh, for Gara. But no, it's going to be removable if there were a Frost Bolt. But Super JJ... I'm still shocked, Noxious, because I know. If, you, if you play Lothab, he just wins that game. And right now, JJ has a chance to come back. 
We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, I feel like that play from JJ was obviously, like the plan was obvious to us, but Gara not seeing the Nova probably felt way secure. Well, I, I understand the Gara play as well because he's seen that one Doomsayer already, right? So he, he thought like, hey, there is nothing that can deal with my board right now. I yeah. just need to stop the flame strike. Um, one of the things though is that Super JJ, yeah, there's a repentance on this board, never mind. I was going to say that's going to be an issue for him, but with the advent of the Blood Mage into Emperor, I feel like you could probably just get away with uh, eating the secret with that and simply letting competitive spirit go off. Because what that means is that the 7-7 seven, seven simply cannot attack and pop you at one health. You're, you're going to have at least two, I think. Yeah, but so this doesn't look great. What's the secret, though, right now? Is this I, it's ice, ice block. It's ice block. It's ice block. Okay, so the ice block is being popped here. Yeah, but he can play the other one for seven, even through Lothab. Yeah. So he's going to get another turn. The question is whether or not he's going to be able to find a heal bot for the following turn. Or ice uh, barrier, because right. uh, he, has, he will be at one, and then Gara can just finish him off with weapon. This is a really good game so far. It's not every day that you see a, a secret paladin just hold up to a mage like this. Um, and the, the, the play that Gara made, I totally get. But this is the type of play that makes the matchup interesting. Absolutely. Little nuances. Right now the problem for Gara is that he can't really put JJ to one with his, his attacks. Like he can put him to two, which means like if there is a second Ice Block being played, he will not be able to pop it if everything, everything is frozen except for the hero. So he's going to put him on three. Uh, I mean, you do feel like you have to trade, but you do need to get that block out of the way. Um, if that means you have to go face with a 7-7 seven, seven and then play a Lothab minibot, then so be it. That's probably the play. Now the only question is, do you attack the face with the weapon or do you attack the, the Falnus? Face means that Consecration becomes a lethal through Ice Barrier. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot of merit to doing that instead. I like it. And then just slam Lothab, shoot a minibot and hope for the best. And the next turn for JJ is really busted. Like just playing that Ice Block for, for 7 mana feels bad. It feels bad, but at the same time, it's a lot better than not playing it. A lot of the time here, this is where he loses Freeze Mage. Like, you just lose straight up. Uh, Reno Jackson! What? <laughs> he's got an Ice Barrier. He's got an Ice Block. But surely he's got one Fireball, one Frostbolt, one Torch, one Ice Lance. Does he actually have? No way. No way. No, I think he still has like no way. cards in his deck for yeah. Reno Jackson to work. So can you tell all the viewers what is Reno Jackson actually doing? How does right. the card work? Uh, so this card basically says if in your deck what's left is simply, like if all the cards in your deck are singles. So if you have one, only one copy of any card in your deck, uh, you're going to get healed to full health. So back to 30. Which means you can't have two fireballs in your deck, you can't have two ice barriers. You can have them when you construct the deck. But you need to at least have drawn one at the point where you play Reno, so that only one is left for you to draw. Uh, it's a very interesting card mechanically, and a lot of people have been trying to make it work. It's worked pretty well for something like Freeze Mage, but I'm not sure if it's going to become like a staple yet. Yeah, it's, people are trying to get things out, and obviously in the finals of a, such a big tournament like a Seed Story Cup, you want to experiment, and, that, and you want to surprise your opponents. Sometimes surprise can just win you the match, and then you advance even further. But it looks really bad for JJ, I think. So what could he get that would save him? So he would have to be heal bot with a 5 minute flame strike. That wouldn't even do it. So he's going to have to Arcane Intellect into a Nova and possibly a heal bot. He used double Doomsayer already, so there is no great way to, to deal it, with the board. It absolutely has to be Arcane Int into heal bot Nova, I think. Yeah, so that he actually saves himself from the True Silver and also... Stops uh, the board. And the from board. there though, I think there's a good chance that he's able to stop the bleeding. Um, because if, if he gets himself the ability to get a heal bot on the board uh, and draw through his deck a little bit more, maybe Reno Jackson is viable. But with a board like this, I feel like Reno Jackson is like an extension of one turn at the very most. Yeah, it's really tough. All right, so it's time to, to argue. Well, wait, no, no, he can actually wipe the board. A flame strike, and then you... There is uh, a Nova, and there is a Blizzard. Nova in Iceland's face. Yeah, it's Nova. enough to survive. It's enough to survive. Right. But he might gamble that there will not be a weapon. But oh. on the other hand, like... You, you there's Mustard, there's Cog Hammer, there's True Silvers. Yeah, there's a lot. I thought he could clear the board by going for the Ice Lance, Freeze a minion, and then Torch, Flame Strike. No, he would have... The, there would be a shield left overall. So what do you do? Wouldn't have enough mana, never mind. Do you Blizzard just to use your mana effectively? Uh, sure, why not? You can you can ping the shield uh, or a big minion to set it up in flame strike range. You know, let's say you ping the uh, the low thub. Um, 
Yeah, and he Iceland's phase as well. So right, and then you can always you know uh, torch the seven five later or prior to flame strike next turn. But you really have to Iceland's face. Not doing that will literally lose you the game. Yeah, uh, he he he's probably going for it because he knows like drawing something like Alex Straza. Oh my God, this is insane! Is this the moment where JJ maybe comes back? Well, if he gets a heal ball, I think because like he needs to flame strike next turn. And or another Iceland's could do it. Yeah, right? just needs to freeze the face, just lock the weapon away. Frostbolt. Yeah. That's oh, wow! <laughs> Unbelievable! He He's no gonna freeze. get to play the Archmage! Can he read? He's got Reno, what? Jackson! No way! What? Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god, did that actually happen? Unbelievable! Oh, we're lucky! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh my god! I don't even know what I witnessed! Uh, oh, what just happened, Noxious? This is amazing! And he can just flame, like he doesn't even care Is this the though? first Reno Jackson of tournament play? This, I don't know! The card is viable! It's amazing! I'm buying his first oh league right now! <laughs> Alright, 1999 this is the biggest, guys! Just this is the biggest <laughs> Pogchamp moment I've seen in, in the oh Hearthstone history. Oh my goodness! This is the game, I think, because now he's got the AoE, he's got the Flame Strike, he's got the Archmage. That's everything! He, he's, he can't possibly not be able to clear this board! Yeah, and Palin, Palin has like no cards. He can't. That's you have their, a weapon. You can do eight to face. Ha oh ha! Oh my goodness! All right, this was actually because the deck construction that Super JJ had to go through to make Reno work was very specific, and he spotted it as soon as he found Frostbolt. Yeah. He spotted. All right, Reno's viable now. I can use it right now and get the full clear with the double Emperor triggers. Flame Strike is cheap. He clears the board and he keeps the four five. Oh my God! And, and he's the best, on his way to a comeback. The best thing is like Reno is not even contested on this board. Reno is just gonna. Friggin' like attack. <laughs> <laughs> New damage. Oh no. This is a concede mod, I think. Eight cards, but like, you know, you know what the cards are. I, I'm there is an like Straza, there is like a second Frostbolt, right? And a lot of good stuff still for JJ. He can just sit like easily win this game. I am actually I, I'm just I'm just happy that I was here when Reno actually this is the first time. I don't think it hasn't been played today. I haven't seen Reno um, being played. And if it wasn't played, I haven't seen it do something as epic as this. This game was so over, Noxious. Yeah. It was so over. Yeah, Gara, when he, the thing is, when Gara didn't play Lothab, that's when Super JJ got a chance. And then with that crazy Frostbolt top deck that gave him the, uh, the one copy, I think he just sealed uh, Gara's fate. So crazy. Yeah, like, Ga Gara cannot do anything now. He is nowhere near, like... A 29 heal. Health. He healed from 1 to 29. This is... It's just insane. By 29 to 30, this is insane. All right, so does that mean the, 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 the card is viable? Is that what it means or is that a fluke? I think it's viable. In, in Freeze Mage, where you actually draw a lot of cards and you get to the moment where you have like seven cards in your deck, it's really possible that you will have only one copy of each card. If, if you build a deck specifically as well, it's not like you have to have a toolbox deck. With right, this. exactly. It doesn't have to be all singles. Mad Scientist thins your, your, your secrets. Yeah. Uh, you're able to get yourself the Reno to work. Technically, I think around you know, 8 to 10 cards is uh, a very good likelihood. So, yeah. Now the question is, how does Gara feel? Because that was devastating. Like, you've, been, you've almost killed that mage. Yeah, but now, I mean, he's got to feel good because he's got a warrior on the back end, which, as we all know, Freeze Mage is essentially uh, an auto loss if you're playing it against... Uh, uh, warrior and with Gara keeping Justicar in the opener, I think we can assume that either the game is gonna you know last very long. Uh, does the Reno Jackson change things though? And the, there's a torch as well. What the Reno Jackson does is it makes sure that if the game goes to fatigue, you have a backup plan, but it doesn't help you burst through the armor. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you're um, really getting much out of it. I, I mean, would still give it to to Warrior. Right. Uh, even uh, even with the Reno Jackson. But then there is Druid for JJ. So if he loses this, he faces Warrior with the Druid, which should be a good matchup for the Druid. Yeah, I mean, uh, technically, yes, but we've seen a lot of... Uh, I mean, the Warriors right now seem to be doing very well with the Druids in this uh, in this tournament. And yeah, I think that's true across the board. Punch of Warrior is so good with the True Heart. I really like the deck. With Bash as well. Right. It gives you uh, a lot more... I mean, Justicar literally made uh, Control Warrior a powerhouse again.
Like people were complaining about TGT, but I think TGT brought so much to the meta game. It did bring a lot of cool stuff. It's just that the I think the reason people are dissatisfied is simply because the the core mechanic, Joust and everything, that didn't quite pan out. Um, but the rest, like some of the cards that were there that actually changed the metagame in some way, really did uh, modify the way some decks played. All right. So, what do you think about the the hand for for JJ? Is there any possibility? Because like he needs Antonidas and he needs Torison. Those are the key cards to win versus Warrior. He's trying to draw as much as he can right now, as you can tell. Um, now the question is, what's the loot hoarder? Oh wow! Well. True heart. Like true. When you play true heart, it's basically concede for mage. I, who who was it that actually just left as soon as it happened? I forget. It might have been JJ that just conceded as soon as the true heart fell down. Last time he was in the spot like this. I would not blame him. He escaped conceded, um, but maybe he thinks four life every turn, and freeze mage is gonna give you that time. Yeah, I mean it's a really big match too. It's for the finals. You don't just throw it on the off chance that Gara misplays. Um, Especially it, because you will play versus this deck, so you want to see as many cards as possible. Yeah. This is not Conquest. This is last year's standing, so Gara will be forced to play this Warrior versus JJ's Druid. I think it might have... Oh, yeah, actually, Chad is correcting me. I like them. They're, they're pretty nice with me once in a while. Uh, they say it was Ignite. It wasn't Super JJ. So Ignite just conceded when he saw True Heart? Yeah, well, he saw... Yeah, he's, I think it was 5. It was Coin, True Heart, and it was literally Escape Concede immediately as we were, like, ready to get into a very long, drawn-out Resident Sleeper match. So one of the things to say about the Torch as well is that it represents a single card, and it deals a total of 9 damage over the course of the game. It's called, almost like, like, Power Blast. I, over time, yeah. <laughs> Reno Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sick. Oh, man. I love it. I love League of Explorers already influencing the metagame here at the semifinal. And, and yeah, that's JJ does it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what can you do with four, ar four armor for two you know, mana? I'll say one thing, Nimsh. I'm happy the players finally have... I mean, this is empathy. For, for us and the, the, the viewers, because as much as I think the, the matchup can be fascinating, like Control Warrior versus Control Warrior can be fascinating because there's a lot of, uh, you know, counting down the cards, counting the fatigue, yeah. counting the threats, having the removal. Uh, there are There is room for error, but Ma Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior has always been something like 95-5. Yeah, I think this is the most one-sided match ever. And it got worse. It, yeah. it got even worse. With um, Bajan the True Heart. Exactly. So thank you, whoever is in charge of doing this. Thank you so much, JJ. And now JJ is going to face this warrior with the Druid. So I mentioned it's a good matchup for the Druid. And Noxious, what do you think about it? Um, I think overall, like the Aspirant, uh, I've already said that multiple times, but maybe um, you know, repeating it never hurts. Is the, the fact that the Aspirant lowers the curve of the Druid. Usually you would say that that's a good thing in that you know the, the extra ramp, the extra wild growth. But the issue with that is that as a result of that, if there's a War Axe, your curve is not, like, your minions are not as big, not as aggressive, and the 2-3 doesn't matter. Like, it barely does anything. So in order for it to be effective, it has to be uncontested. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that, but looking at JJ's hand, it looks really good. The start with the Wild Grove, the, the buff for, to the Mana Crystals actually stays, and he has Innervate as well, Coin, and really good uh, follow-up with the minions. Do you just go uh, Innervate Emperor here? I think you can. Yeah. It's, it's not contested, there was no fireworks, and if you bait uh, Death Spite here, it's probably fine as well. Like, that, th that Emperor hit so many good cards. He didn't hit any, any combo parts, though. No Savage or no Force Nature. Uh, I mean, it's still all right. Uh, you're forcing the Druid, um, the Warrior, to attack into it. You're forcing him to have a weapon. Whichever weapon that is, uh, he absolutely has to have one or a Bash. Do you go with Armor Smith and uh, Fireworks? You might actually want to go with the Death Spite because the next turn is turn five, and on turn five, there's sometimes a minion that has five health. Yeah, I mean, what I like, what I'd like to see here is Death Spite, uh, and you sacrifice the Armor Smith, and the next turn, if there's a Druid of the Claw with six, you can attack you into can it, get it. a draw, and then draw again. Yeah, I like um, it. But it depends whether or not you value your health, right? I mean, because if you think the armor from the Armor Smith is going to be more valuable then maybe you attack with the Acolyte well, instead. You don't have uh, another Armor Smith and a Shield Block in your hand, so right. I think he shouldn't value it that much. Yeah, I like it. I like Death Spite because of the ex exactly Druid of the Claw or a possible um, Azure Drake. Yeah. I mean, if there's a six, like a seven drop, right? Uh, it could be played for six with the coins, so Ancient of Lore you could still deal with with the Death Spite. So all, all the discounts also being taken into consideration. So Gara values that armor more. And it also makes sense, if he feels like his hand is good and he has draw with the shield block, he wants to have as much armor as possible, because at some point you just kind of outvalue Druid. Like, it, Druid will not be able to combo you. 
it will not. I, I've seen one game uh, with Stanislav Sivka where he was playing around double combo, and his opponent had double combo and couldn't just double combo and win. Yeah, it, you were like maybe because one of the one of the things that Stan Sivka does a lot is he does he has a lot of turns where he can develop a weapon. Say on three or even on two, he could you know war axe preemptively. He'll just armor up pass as long as he can until now he's forced to respond. And that means that very often he can you know squeeze in an extra ten health during the game, which is more than enough to prevent you know some combo play. All right, so now for JJ, what can he do here? There's an armor smith and a firework, so he's rid of the claw is contested as well as uh, Azure Drake. Wait, I have I have one question. Sure. Could you make me a Millhouse Mana Storm cosplay one day? Is, is that even possible? Are you asking how, how would I get no, Everything you. is possible. There Every is a Leroy <laughs> I would love Jenkins that. cosplay oh. with the whole card, so you can no. even cosplay Hearthstone. I cards. just want to be like a gnome. Like, I, I'm, I'm tall, like I'm short enough to pull it off. Yeah, that's true. And I just need the hair. <laughs> oh, damn. Sorry. So I, all I need is the, the hair and the, um, the costume. So I'd have to like figure out a way to do it. I need some free spells for your opponent. Yeah, as well. Like, you just like throw cards to people's faces, like throw them at me. Yeah. Yeah, there are a few other fireballs. cosplays when you can throw cards at people. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> yeah, it's like card games on motorcycles, and then they go through cards to each other. That's all. I don't know. That sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like this would probably be the only and first cosplay I do, but maybe sounds next viable. BlizzCon. Yeah, I think I'll have to hit Good you plan. up about that. So, what are we on? There's the Shredder and Druid of the Claw that came down. It's a pretty big tempo swing. Without Brawl, it's a bit tricky, but Sylvanas can definitely equalize this board. Yeah, especially because you've seen the Keeper of the Grove, so there will be no silence. Yeah, you might be afraid of combo next turn, so you definitely want to clear up this board. Since Emperor fell down on seven, then the two pieces can be played. Um, and, you know, he's been very aggressive. So how do you deal with this board? I don't know. Um, maybe you pop the Shredder and you attack into the Keeper of the Grove, but if what comes out isn't very good, say it gets a 2-drop that actually has a lot of power, you're back to square one. I feel like maybe attacking the 4-3 with the Belcher uh, might be something viable, because you oh, just execute. slow down... Oh, wow, that is sick. I, I think you still do attack the, the Shredder first. With Wait, the, what was uh, played? Oh, actually, you will not win the Shredder. Right, you would, uh, you would just execute the Shredder and then... Like kill whatever's inside, I think. Depending yeah. on what's was there. Oh wow. Interesting. This is card draw. If and that yeah, this is card draw, but if that would be an Oyotron, then the cat would survive. That's right. Actually. Uh oh. There is a combo. That's getting a bit scary, because now he can wrath and cycle for one mana. The blood mage will give him an extra spell damage, which is worth a lot. And then slow thub. He actually didn't cycle there. Uh, yes, he did. He picked up Lothab. He drew Force of Nature off the top. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. Because that was like plus two spell damage. Yeah, exactly. He can just wrath the three health remaining um, on the armor smith. That was pretty good. That's pretty tricky, though, because you can't kill uh, the Drake. So if there is a combo coming up, somehow, like one of the pieces was reduced by Thorison. And Sylvanas is so awkward here as well. Right, you don't want to play it. You just play Sylvanas die. and then you lose it. Yeah. But uh, it might be your only line of play. But the thing is, you don't even have an A drop to follow this up with. If you play Sylvanas and everything gets traded into it and Super JJ goes for Dr. Boom, you simply do not have an answer. I wish that Warrior will have dual wielding at some point. You can just equip double fireworks, you know, like charge. One day we'll have double, like dual wielding for sure. There's no way they don't do it. It's too badass. In WoW, in WoW TCG we had six double win, uh, six double wield. Six, 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 six double wield. What? Actually had, you could equip six weapons. I'm no, uh, I'm not a physicist, but I can't figure out how a human would do that. That was not a human character. Oh, okay. It was like the six hands uh, demon. Oh, the Shivaras. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is he gonna give Sylvanas? <laughs> is he gonna give Sylvanas the trance or just punch face and combo next turn? Because if he goes for the combo face, then he's winning next turn. Um, assuming that Gara is not able to armor up beyond what he's at. I mean, Bash would punish him, Shield Block would punish him. Well, the combo next turn, if the uh, Azure Drake is killed, how much damage is that? That's 17, right? So he's not... He's like not quite dead. I actually, Super JJ played a, took a very aggressive line of play here. He could have traded and played Lothab, secured the board, and from there actually uh, decided what to do. But, I mean, he can still get the you know armor up plus Lothab. Maybe he's trying to let Alex Straza fall down first or not risk being exposed to it. I think it's still fine, like, just... Uh, Shapeshift the Savannas, play Lothab is pretty good. Or a Keeper Shade. 
Yeah, Keeper Shade Keeper looks, Shade might be even better. Yeah, because the weapon still doesn't kill it. But Baron Geddon will make sure that gets punished really severely. But it reduces the health of the Druid. Actually, it reduces the health, uh, the health of the Warrior. So he can go to 15. He'll stay at 15, right? And right. Actually, no, he'll be at, yeah, he'll be at uh, 13. And that's that's game. That's game. That is it. Wow. Okay. Wow. And this is this is it. So Super JJ with the on the back of the combo already, already like taking the headphones. Earphones. Yeah. He knows he's dead. Yeah, Reno Jackson. He remember <laughs> Reno Jackson. <laughs> remember, remember. What is that? The 14th of November. What, what date are we? I don't even know. <laughs> Whatever. Guy folks day. I don't know which day is that. Cringe. Anyway. Super JJ goes to the finals. Against Stan Sifka. Nice. So congratulations to them. Uh, Temple Storm had three members. There was a team kill. So obviously, you know, everybody could not go through. But they didn't get anybody in the, uh, in the finals. Stan Sifka, currently teamless, I believe. I'm not sure. I yeah, he's, he's a free agent right now. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he was on Luminosity Gaming and now a free agent, or at least soon to be. And JJ is my co-teammate. Do we have a mic for JJ? Oh, yeah, we do have the mic for JJ. I think we do. <laughs> so you, you know what I'm going to talk to you about. <laughs> so Reno Jackson. Yeah. Um, that was a really quick switch. First of all, you, it, everything happened yesterday, right? You had to submit the decks yesterday, so you didn't really have uh, a ton of time to prepare <laughs> like testing and the deck, uh, the deck building, I guess. But you figured out a list that somehow <laughs> is able to pull it off. <laughs> that's like super and amazing, right? Like the dream scenario. <laughs> from one to thirty, like this is the first Reno Jackson I've ever seen in a tournament like system. But the worst part is, it was the best possible. You know what? Jackson I, could I, think, I think he was missing one thing. You should have actually brought like Explorer's hat and then play Reno Jackson and put Explorer's hat on your hat. <laughs> In Freeze Mage with Spellslinger? Like, I, how do you get that? No, I mean, not the card. Like a physical hat on your head. Oh, man. Oh, man. That it would was be so pretty, epic. Pretty, yeah, but it was pretty dank. I like it. <laughs> so, uh, that being said, congratulations. You're going to the finals against Tan Sifka. Yeah, you know you. his decks. At least you got a good idea of what mm -hmm. he's playing. He is my practice partner and right. helped, helped me a lot. Like, I had great the practice up. partners. I practiced with Just Zane from Tempo Storm, with RDU, Crane, um, and, and Stan as well. Like I have such a great practice group, and I really want to give a shout out there. Um, yeah. All right. So shout out to everybody who helped JJ practice. You'll recognize yourselves. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I wish you luck for the finals. That's a really big, uh, really big event that you went through. I mean, you did beat quite a lot of players. Banning the shaman from Gara was that because you were really afraid of the way it was built, or because it was an unknown factor? Oh, uh, you just do the like you do the matchup percentages, make like a spreadsheet, and go what is the worst matchups for you and versus yeah, shaman. Right. Makes sense. Any uh, questions? Uh, yeah, absolutely. No shout out to your teammates. Sorry. No shout out to your teammates. Oh yeah, and my, my <laughs> teammates, of course. I'm man. just casting you and like yelling when Reno Jackson falls down. I've got, I've got nothing to do with your win, man. You, you, like the performance was amazing. Uh, did you did you know like he could actually play Lotheb uh, on turn? Yeah, yeah, five? yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, you have to go for the stall and I had uh, Reno or Alex. No, but like there was a turn where he, oh. I think he could have won straight up. Uh, when oh. you cone of cold Doomsayer, he could yeah. have played Lotheb instead before. Of, bef the turn before. So you couldn't cone of cold, but he opted for uh, not playing around it because he didn't see Nova. Feels um, bad, man. It happens. I mean, <laughs> once in a while it'll happen. But yeah, it was uh, a little unfortunate. How do you feel going into uh, the, the finals uh, against Tanis Asifka? Oh, I'm happy. I'm super excited. Like, I'm already really happy, and that'll be a cool series, I guess. Are you confident? Do you think you're gonna win versus Stanislav? You will see. Like, you're just gonna play. And no, no, you have to say yes. <laughs> if ever someone asks you if you win, you have to say oh, yes. Oh yeah. yeah you, no. A little bit more confidence. No, it's okay. <laughs> No? Okay, you're gonna lose. Yeah, okay, yeah. then you lose. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right, um, we'll we'll meet we'll on the see, loser's right? bench. <laughs> I'll meet you there. So that being said, guys, we'll be taking a short break before we move on to the last match of the day, which is gonna be the finals between you and Stan Sifka. Yeah. So uh, guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 